Hi there, it's Mike from Esri Canada. In this video I'd like to show how you can streamline your editing workflows in ArcGIS Pro using a variety of the editing tools. This includes using the Trace tool, Preset Templates, Group Templates, and many of the other tools that are available on the Editing Toolbar. We're going to work in the City of Kamloops where we're going to update some construction related data in the downtown area. We can see some of the features that we're updating here. Let's move into this area over here where we can start to see that we're putting up uh, some temporary fencing, there's some pedestrian walkways and other uh, features here in our construction zone. Now one of the nice things that we can do when editing is use the variety of tools that are available to us for each of our feature templates. I want to create some temporary fencing here but I want it to follow essentially the same feature here, this street edge that we have in our map. So what I can do with any of these um, tracing tools is set an offset to follow a certain feature. So I'm going to take a distance in this case of 4 meters. And then when, with my snapping on, I can follow this along all the way to the edge of that area. I want to have a pedestrian path go along too. So I'll turn the trace tool on here as well. But this time let's bring that offset down a little bit to 2 meters. And there we go, we have our temporary fencing and we have our pedestrian walkway as well. You can also see on the map here, we've got a bunch of point features here related to different construction assets. I've got certain features grouped together here, all related to safety. Now, what if I want to always create those features together in that same orientation here? Well, let's, um, let's see how we can do that by creating it the, um, the first time. We'll head over to this parking lot where we're going to set up some more of these safety features again and we're going to set it up with uh, aligning it with the grid. So I've turned the grid on here on the, on the bottom and I have a lot of properties here that I can use for the grid to allow me to snap to polygons, polylines, but I can also use it to snap to point features which is what I'm going to do in this case. So the grid's nice, I'm going to set it off this corner of the parking lot, snap it along here to the edge of the line of the parking lot. Then I want to set up the features here that I always want to be used together here. First aid, uh, the fire extinguisher, hand wash station, and where we have all the safety gear. So these are always going to be together here in sort of this little safety assets area. So what I can do next is select them all and then go into my manage templates window which I already have open and get into the preset templates from the selected features here. So from here is where I can set up my preset templates. In a previous video I showed you how to do a preset template just from one feature in one feature template, but here we see we can use it for many features that span different templates. So we'll call this safety assets. And now when we go back to our Create Features window, we can see we have it available to us here. So I'm going to remove this, remove the selection. I'm not going to use the grid in this case. I'm going to go to another parking lot where we're setting up some of these safety uh, features for our construction zone. And then when I go to the Safety Assets now, you can see that I've got four different features that are going to be created together and different tools that I can use. So now as I move around the map, I can put in these four features just like that. Likewise, I can uh, use other tools here, like the Rotate tool. Maybe I don't want them in the same orientation, so I can put these around here and align them in a different way. It's almost like a, a GIS fidget spinner, where I can put those features in that orientation or where I move them around and rotate them based on that alignment. So that's how we can use those preset templates as well. Pretty handy little tool that we can use to streamline our editing workflows. Let's go over to another area where we'll take a look at one more set of templates that we can use. Here's a closed construction area. We have a construction route, a construction zone buffer, start, ending of construction lines, as well as um, some road closure signs. I want to do this all in one edit function. So to do that, I can leverage something called Group Templates. Let's take a look at how we um, set those up. We need to go back to our Manage Templates. And in here, I click the primary 
feature that we're going to be creating, in this case the construction route, and go to group template. Here I can give it a name. I'll call it construction zone. And then I want to set up the different builders. This is where the real, um, the real magic happens here. I have the construction route set up, which is just going to be my line feature. But now I can add different features that are going to get edited depending on what I'm doing in the edit task. So I'll take a construction start at the, at the beginning of the line. And I'll even put an offset here of 6 meters down the line because I'm going to add some other features at the end. Not notably my road closure signs. At the end I'll also add a construction end. At the end of the line we'll offset that 6 meters. I will also move to the road closed at every vertex. So whenever I have a vertex, that'll be at a road closure sign. We'll see how that works in a second. And we want to put that buffer in there. So this is where I can get a polygon feature here, specifically my construction boundary. Buffer that of six meters here to show this as well. Okay, so I've got one, two, three, four, five features being created, points, lines, and polygons in this group template. So let's see how this is going to come together here. Let's go to where we're going to start a new, uh, new uh, construction zone. So I see that I, can, I have the template here. I'll just work with the line feature, but I'll use different tools on the editing toolbar. I don't have a street center line, which I might follow in this case here to make my edit. So instead I'll use the midpoint tool to set this up based on the edges of these curves. Then using the C key, I'm going to pan along here, move to the next intersection where I want to close the road off. Now I don't have the midpoint tool in this case to use. I'm going to use the distance to distance tool or distance distance tool to align this based on distances from the curbs. So I've got information here that says this is a radius here of 10.6 meters away from the curb where I'd like the road closure side in this case. And then going to the other curb, I can go to a radius of 11.6 meters. And then just clicking the point will allow me to enter that. I'll just use the uh, line tool in this case to continue along, panning with control or just with the C key again. I know that I want to have it a distance of 173 meters, my notes indicate move it to here and then I might want to really follow this along with parallel and then I'm going to move it to here for the one vertex and then I'm going to go along here for the uh, midpoint tool to finish it off. So I'll have that I haven't really been using too many of the uh, shortcut keys here, so let's just pan out. And we'll see here when I use F2 now, I finish the edit. And I can see my road closures for the intersections at the ends, the road construction beginning and ending, plus the construction route, and then the buffer for the construction zone. So that's a look at how you can streamline your editing workflows with a variety of the editing tools. If you found this helpful, be sure to like this video. And if you have any comments, feel free to comment below. If you'd like to see more as you can videos, subscribe to our channel using the subscribe button. Happy mapping.